a Fox 61 weather watch alert for accumulating snow and we've changed the forecast totals we'll explain coming up. Plus a man shot behind the wheel of a vehicle. Now a homicide investigation is underway. Pretty brazen. I mean, um, you don't see too many homicides like that in the middle of the day. We'll break down what we know so far. Allergy season is rapidly approaching and experts are warning it could hit Connecticut hard this year. How long it's expected to last. And creativity on display in Hartford. We'll take you down to Makerspace CT for a showcase from their STEAM team. Fox 61, Connecticut's news station begins with a weather watch alert. A weather watch alert tonight here at 10, looking ahead to some snow tomorrow night. Good evening, I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Thank you so much for joining us. Tomorrow night's system is all ahead of a potentially strong nor'easter to kick off next week. Let's toss things right over to Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank to break everything down for us. Rachel, how much snow are we expecting? All of a sudden, winter's here, right, guys? It's, where did it come from? Uh, we're expecting anywhere between a coating up to four inches of snow across the state, the most in the western part of the state, the least in eastern areas. Areas. And we'll start to see this all begin to break out mostly after seven or eight o'clock tomorrow night. It may initially begin as a mix of rain and snow or just rain for some areas while temperatures are dropping and then we'll switch entirely over to snow. If you're one of those areas that don't start with it, slippery roads is the reason why we wanted to let you know about this for late Friday night after the evening commute continuing into part of Saturday morning. But how much could accumulate? We're thinking two to four inches of snow is possible for areas west of Hartford along the immediate shoreline though where temperatures are going to be above freezing through the duration of this event and far above freezing a coating to an inch or two is likely and there could be a very sharp cutoff with three or four inches for parts of western Connecticut and southwestern Connecticut and very little just maybe a dusting or coating on the grassy surfaces for some in eastern areas so there could be quite a range across the state right now we're looking at temperatures in the 30s to right around 40 degrees and the satellite and radar is calm for now, but it will be a different story around this time tomorrow night. Overnight lows will be dipping into the 20s and as we head through the day tomorrow, we'll start the day off with a bit of sunshine, cool with temperatures close to 30 to begin the day, increasing clouds and then again after 7 or 8 o'clock, we'll see that rising chance for snow or rain to start and then that will fill in as we head through the overnight hours. We'll show you the future radar and talk about what that means heading into the weekend, the Hartford St. Patrick's Day parade and looking ahead to that potentially bigger storm for early next week coming up. Going on, we'll see you in a bit, Rachel. Thank you. And make sure you download the free Fox 61 News app. It's a great resource to get live updates on weather conditions across the state, plus hour by hour radar ahead of this weekend storm. I'm Sarah Sanchez, the Fox 61 Breaking News Center. We're following an active police investigation in the town of Hamden. A pedestrian was hit along Dixwell Avenue. Police have Dixwell Avenue shut down right now, and it could be closed for several more hours. We have a live look right now at the scene. The mayor of Hamden confirms to Fox 61 a person was hit this evening, but we don't know their condition. Police aren't saying much at this time, including whether the driver of that car is cooperating with police, but we do have a crew on scene. But once again, Dixwell Avenue is closed between Putnam and Church Street, which is about a half mile stretch of a major artery running through town. We'll continue to follow the latest from Hamden and bring you new information from police right here on Connecticut's news station. Ben, Jen, back to you. Sarah, thanks for the update. Keep us posted. Moving on here tonight, one man is dead in Hartford and police are now searching for a suspect in, in the city's third homicide this year. Yeah, here's a look at that scene this afternoon, but this is only one location that the crime occurred at today, that there was another second scene. Fox 61's Deandrea Turner has been on this story all day. She joins us live at Hartford Police with more. Deandrea. Well, you guys, this crime, it happened around 2.30 this afternoon in broad daylight. And now the family of 28-year-old Carl Patterson Jr., they are mourning tonight with the loss of their loved one. And police say that they believe that they have the identity of the suspect's car, but this is still a very active investigation. Two crimes in the capital city a bullet riddled car and another car totaled. They located a male unresponsive. The car was shot up, had uh, numerous gunshot wounds in it. 28 year old Carl Patterson Jr. was pronounced dead at the hospital in Hartford after police say someone shot five times into his car. The victim traveled uh, 
eastbound on Albany where he crashed the intersection after being shot on Baltimore Street. Police say that after Patterson was shot, he crashed his vehicle into another one on Albany Avenue in Woodland Street. The two scenes are just a little over a mile apart from each other. All of this happening in broad daylight as kids were getting out of school just around the corner. Yeah, pretty brazen. I mean, um, you don't see too many homicides like that in the middle of the day. At this time, police are calling the shooting targeted. The detectives are on Baltimore now canvassing for exactly what happened there. Once they hit the avenue, we're covered with our C4 cameras. Um, so we know what happened after that. And because this crime was active during school hours, there were many children that were walking past the crime scene. So coming up at 11, I spoke with a social work professor at Quinnipiac University about how parents can talk to their kids after they see something like this. That's at 11. For now in Hartford, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. DeAndrea, thank you. We do have a Fox follow-up tonight in the deadly stabbing of a teenager outside of a house party in Shelton. Police announcing two parents are under arrest tonight for serving alcohol to those minors at the party. 59-year-old Paul and 51-year-old Susanna Leifer were arrested this morning. It was at their home where police say the fight broke out. 17-year-old Raul Valley is accused of bringing a switchblade and allegedly stabbed 17-year-old Jimmy McGrath with that switchblade. McGrath died shortly after at Bridgeport Hospital. Valley is now facing a murder charge. The parents are due back in court in April. The Stonington community is remembering a beloved local custodian tonight after he was killed in a hit and run on Monday night. 70 year old Gary Piver was a longtime custodian at Stonington High School and was tragically killed in a hit and run on South Broad Street. Flowers and a bicycle in memory of Piver are now placed in the area where that crash happened. Piver's tragedy striking up a serious conversation about bike safety. It could have been prevented with better bike infrastructure, um, with a bridge, a pedestrian bridge could have been built here, um, better signage. Well, police announced late yesterday they found the car they believe the suspect used in the crash, but no word yet on if they found the suspect or made any arrests. A Waterbury man is facing charges in connection to a deadly hit and run. Herbert Kosako is accused of hitting a 30-year-old Jaime Dillard Heimar Dillard at the intersection of Meriden and Pierpont Road last night. Police say Kasaka left the scene, but later located him and then took him into custody on evading charges. Dillard was taken to the hospital and died early this morning. Police say more charges are expected for Kasako. Well, new at 10 tonight, not great news for seasonal allergy sufferers. Experts say that allergy season is starting earlier and lasting longer. Yeah, Fox 61's Gabby Molina live in Hartford tonight with more on what you need to know about allergy season. Gabby. Ben and Jen, Hartford is one of the toughest cities to live in for those who suffer from seasonal allergies. That's according to a 2022 report that also had New Haven and Bridgeport near the top of the list. And now experts say that that already tough season is starting even earlier. Tiny signs that spring is almost here. But for those who suffer from allergies, they know that means pollen is too. It's the pollen that really affects my eyes. My eyes swell and they get itchy. It'll start to take your nose and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. And then I know a few minutes later, I'll start sneezing uncontrollably. I can't stand that. I can't stand it. According to the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, Jacqueline Mitchell lives in one of the most challenging cities to live with seasonal allergies in the entire country. Hartford. She knows the challenge all too well. I'd be all puffy and watery and you'd be like, oh, and then sometimes I just have to stay inside and wait till it subsides. That's the thing. I, I love spring, but I don't like the allergies. It's just it, their pain. And unfortunately, that dreaded allergy season is starting even sooner. In general, allergy season is lasting longer and it's more intense with higher pollen counts. And as you can imagine, with the very little frost and snow we had this winter, it's coming earlier rather than later. The impacts of a mild winter will likely be felt this spring. We will see a more abrupt uptick in the pollen and ragweed spring allergies because you're going to get the flowering earlier. A new report from the nonprofit Climate Central found that growing season across the U.S. has been getting longer and longer each year since 1970. So allergy sufferers should gear up. Experts suggest taking medication or using nasal sprays to try to treat the uncomfortable symptoms.
just one or both of those pharmaceuticals go a real long way, and I'm speaking personally and professionally, to relieve allergy symptoms. They are safe. They are non-habit forming, and you can be instructed on how not to overuse them. Now, with this earlier allergy season, when should you start thinking about taking medications and other treatments? I'll tell you what experts say coming up on the Fox 61 News at 11. For now, live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Okay, Gabby, we will see you then. Thank you very much. Well, new at 10, a Connecticut Supreme Court justice is moving up in the judicial system. It was announced one of the state's Supreme Court justices would be appointed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Justice Maria Araujo Khan was approved by the U.S. Senate today. The Second Circuit Court is based in New York City and deals with cases related to securities and antitrust issues. Governor Ned Lamont releasing this statement today after Justice Khan announced her resignation, saying in part, quote, I am saddened by her vacancy on the Connecticut Supreme Court, but I am proud that she has this new opportunity to serve on the U.S. Court of Appeals. On behalf of the people of Connecticut, I thank her for her many years of service to our state. Well, we have an update to a story that's trending on fox61.com tonight. The SPCA of Connecticut is set to close due to financial reasons, leaving many animals with an uncertain future tonight. Last week, we told you that they were on the hunt for homes for their dozens of animals, but after hearing about the closing, the community stepped up to help in a big way. Originally, the shelter was looking for homes for 20 dogs and 13 cats. But today, the shelter announced that they were overwhelmed with over 700 applications and are now working with 15 local no-kill shelters to make sure that none of the animals will be euthanized. A good ending to a story that we were hoping would end that way. Great news. Great news. All right.